Wales, 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 Wales. It's Wales time, everyone. <laughs> Hello! Today we are continuing on with part 2 of my trip to Alaska and last video was all about baby seals so go check it out if you want to see some baby seals and learn more about why there are baby seals in the part of Alaska that I visited and today we're talking all about humpback whales so I love whales a lot they are my favorite animals of all times and we were blessed on every single day of our trip to Glacier Bay Alaska that we took we saw whales every single day even the days we weren't on a boat all day we were just like hiking along the coastline in Glacier Bay National Park we still saw whales we saw some killer whales which are my personal all-time favorite we saw some minky whales and we saw today's subject the humpback whale Humpback whales being the giants of the ocean that they are, weirdly enough, eat some of the smallest creatures in the ocean. So they eat plankton, krill, and small fish, and they have to eat a lot of it. So in the summertime in Alaska, which are their feeding grounds, they can actually eat up to 3,000 pounds of food a day. Yeah, you try doing that. That's not gonna work out for you very well. And like I said, the reason they're in Alaska during the summertime is to eat. Humpback whales also undergo one of the longest migrations in the animal kingdom. Every single year they swim, or at least in the Pacific Ocean humpback whales, they swim from Alaska to Hawaii and back. They stay the summer in Alaska eating and eating and eating, and then they migrate down to Hawaii to reproduce and to give birth. And then the following spring they head back up to Alaska for the summertime feeding. This is a round trip of like 6,000 miles, which is a crazy amount. And what's even more crazy is after they leave Alaska, they won't really eat again until they return the following summer. So they fast and use up all of that blubber they store by, you know, eating up to 3,000 pounds of food a day. I also could not go hungry for about nine months of the year because I just ate food and I'm already hungry again. <laughs> Humpback whales also engage in a lot of kind of playful behavior or display behavior that isn't seen as much in other whale species. So they like to jump out of the water, which is called breaching. They like to slap their flippers or even their tails, also known as flukes. And scientists are not 100% sure why they do this. There's a couple of working theories. So the big one is communication. They think that like jumping out of the water or slapping fins and stuff like that against the water is a way that humpback whales can communicate with each other. They also potentially think it has to do with trying to, dis if they're jumping out of the water, it has to do with like dislodging barnacles or like sea lice or other pests that get on them. And then finally, they think it's kind of a show of, they're trying to show off to each other. Especially they like to breach a lot in Hawaii um, where they are trying to show off to each other to get a mate to reproduce. Um, but you still see some of this behavior in Alaska as well. And kind of that showing off theory doesn't hold up too well in Alaska where their goal is not to reproduce, it is to eat. And so it's kind of bringing to another aspect of maybe they're just doing it for fun. We were very fortunate on our trip to see a whale breach and a whale uh, slapping its flippers against the water along with its tail fluke like 10 times in a row. It was super cool. And the whales that were doing that were mostly baby or juvenile humpback whales. And they really seem to be having the time of their life. So maybe sometimes they do just like to do it for fun when their mom is away eating and they have, don't know what to do with themselves except for jump out of the water. But it is an amazing experience to see that. One of the other really cool things we got to experience while there, and I'll give you a chance to experience it yourself, is we dropped a hydrophone or underwater microphone into the water and listened to the noises the humpback whales were making. Because literally at one point, as you can kind of see, we were like surrounded on all sides by humpback whales. They were just like everywhere. So we dropped a hydrophone into the water and started to hear the noises. And here's a little bit of a sound bite of that. Well, hear the whale? Yeah. <laughs> and it's crazy because I think it sounds like a dinosaur or an elephant and that was just one of the many sounds they made there was like a cool like bubbly sound that they made along with like an old man kind of snoring and it just their sounds could travel for miles and miles and miles because 
water is a great transmitter of sound. So they also use these calls and other whales use some like calls as well or signals or clicks in order to communicate with each other. And since it can travel very far, they can communicate with whales that are really far away. So the last thing I wanna talk about real quick, kind of wrapping up this whale encounter experience is how scientists can actually identify certain humpback whales and track them and know that they migrate between Alaska and Hawaii. And this is through an identification system that is actually utilized for other types of whale species as well. But in humpback whales, what they do is scientists or researchers or individuals take a picture of the tail fins, the flukes of the humpback whales and upload it to a database because every single humpback whale has a distinct, unique pattern to its tail, just like we have unique fingerprints. So you could take a picture, upload it to this database that is called Happy Whale, and it will compare that picture to other stored images in its database and match it with a whale. So one of the whales that is closely followed by this database and scientists, her name is Flame. She returns to Juno every year and goes to Hawaii in the winter time. And Flame, not only being identified as being Flame, you can, thanks to the Happy Will database, they can also identify her kids because um, every, when she has a kid, it'll travel with her that following summer. And she has had seven babies over the years, which is a lot for a humpback whale, at least seven babies that they think are hers. And I think this is so cute. So her name is Flame. And then she has babies that are named Spark, Ember, Cinder, Sizzle, Bolt, Bunsen. And I am forgetting one. Oh my god, okay, Spark, Ember, Bunsen, Smoke, Bolt, Cinder, and Sizzle. I think that is so cute. <laughs> They're all themed, I love a good theme, and personally my favorite one is Bunsen, like Bunsen, Burner, and Flame, all. Oh, I just, it's so cute, and I'm so happy for her little fiery children. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed today's video and seeing some amazing whale content I was able to capture in Alaska. Of course, there was like other amazing stuff that the whales did that I didn't capture because they seem to really know when people put down their phones and that's when they do all the exciting things. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, learning about humpback whales and getting to see a little bit about them. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I will be coming at you next week with a cool chemical reaction video. And as always, keep it sciencey.